So I'm flipping through Nick Carter's Fly Fisher's Guide to North Carolina and Georgia, hoping to make another trip down to fish with my buddy Jim this fall. And I came across an interesting pattern that I've never tied before. Now I've heard of the fly, it's called the Holy Grail, and it's actually quite popular. There is no shortage of videos out there on this thing. But some of you may not have tied this one before, and it is a good one to have in your box. It's a pretty simple tie, basically a caddis pupa. It's a little fuzzy and a little bit of flash ribbed up through the body. And there are a few different ways you can tie this thing. Vary the colors to match the bugs in your water, maybe a caddis green body or a orange or kind of gold if the October caddis are hatching. But you can never go wrong with the natural colors. You know, the boring tans and browns, because let's face it, a lot of the real bugs out there are kind of boring. But one other way you can vary this thing is with the legs. You can wrap the front hackle up as a collar or you can tie it underneath as a throat. Now I'm gonna go with a full collar on this one. It does make it a little reminiscent of a North Country spider, but I think it looks just a little bit better. So if you've never tied this one before, give it a shot. It's a pretty fun tie. So there it is in the vise, a holy grail. Basically a caddis pupa type nymph, though it is a little fancier than most of caddis pupas we tie. Now this is a size 14, so get any curve shank, scud hook, clink hammer, whatever you'd like to tie your nymphs with. And that's 2.4 millimeter tungsten bead. Certainly doesn't need to be tungsten, but if you want it a little bit heavier, then yeah, go ahead and use tungsten. And I'm gonna use red thread. You could use black, and if you want a red hot spot, just change your thread out at the end. But I'm just gonna go the whole thing with red, save that one last step. Now I'll catch it in, Oh, somewhere in the middle of the fly. And we're going to put the bead, we're gonna affix it about a bead length back because we're gonna put a collar hackle in front of it and then leave a red head. So put a couple extra wraps right here and maybe pull it back. And then we're gonna do some figure eights. Is that gonna be right? I think that's pretty close. So I'll do some figure eight wraps right here just to lock this. And does that leave us enough room up front? Yeah, I think we'll be in fine shape. So go ahead and take this thread back Oh, anywhere in the middle and grab some pearlescent or mylar opal, not mylar, but an opal or pearl, you know, flashaboo type tinsel. And I'm going with a size small. I did try one of them with a medium and I don't think it, I think it was a little bit overpowering. So that one you saw in the vise at the beginning, that was also a small. So go ahead and catch it in and then wrap your thread back here to where you want the body to start. So well around the bend of the hook, I think that's going to be fine about right there back it off a couple of turns and then let's put some wax on it now I've got this little hairline dubbing rake right here which makes it pretty easy to pull some of this fur and under fur out from a, a hair's mask I just pulled this raked it out right below the ear and right above the eye socket now if you don't have that fancy little hairline tool just pluck it out with your fingers or snip it with your scissors and maybe a two inch noodle. We're not gonna take it all the way up there to the bead, but just right behind it. Now I got a little bit of a lumpy noodle right here, but let's see if it's gonna work okay. And try to get a little taper if you want. You know, most caddis pupa imitations do have a little bit of a, a tapered body right there. And I think we got a little bit of one, so I think we'll be okay. Now let's just go ahead and wrap this pearlescent flash up here. Probably four wraps on this size 14 is gonna be fine. You can go a little bit more. You know, you could do five if you want just a little bit more flash. Totally up to you. Now grab about 10 or 12 fibers from good old pheasant tail right here. Snip it off, you know, try to get it even right there. I wanna back my thread off just a little bit. This is gonna be the wing case for our thorax. So catch this in, get it pretty tight right here, and a little bit wide. There we go, I think that's gonna work. Now I'm gonna leave my thread at the back of this thorax area, put a little bit more wax on it, and then use some of the same dubbing that I used for the, the body to make a little bit thicker of a thorax. A lot of caddis, pupa, and nymphs like this, they're gonna be a little bit thicker up front than they are in the back, so just doesn't need to be a long noodle, but make it just a little bit thicker than the last one. Okay, I think that's a little thicker. Maybe I could go a little bit more, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna take my thread right in front of this bead. I'm gonna reposition it a little bit so it doesn't slide off. 
Now I'm gonna wrap this pheasant tail over and then just secure it up front. Okay, we've got a few tight wraps right there. I think that's gonna be fine. I should probably have maybe used a couple more fibers, but we're okay. I'm not gonna go back and redo this part of it. Now, a few extra wraps right here. Just to smooth this area out. Now, just a small little partridge feather right here. And I'll flip it around, grab the front, create a little V notch right here. You could go ahead and snip that off if you want, or just snip it off after you've caught it in, which is what I usually do. So several good tight wraps right here. This thing will pull out on you if you're not careful, but let's go ahead and snip this front. That's why I think some people snip that before they catch it in, so you don't have that little step right there. But I don't have a lot of feather to work with, so I'm gonna take my spring-loaded hackle pliers and I'm only gonna do one and a half wraps maybe. That's probably all that would be laying barbs down anyway. So let's go try to preen these back as we go. That's a full wrap right there. And then this next one right here. Now it is a little bit reminiscent of a North Country spider with these legs sticking out. And I've seen a lot of them tied this way, but some of them are tied, instead of wrapping a collar hackle, just putting a little throat underneath and that's Again, that would be your option too. But I kind of like the look of this, these legs coming out all over the place, like the old North Country flies. So let's get rid of that right there and pull these back and just get us a decent sized head right here. Just pressing these, you know, partridge right up behind that bead and building a, a big red kind of hot spot head. I'm gonna leave my thread at the back of that head and then try to whip finish it right in the back without trapping any of these partridge barbs right here. It's gonna be kind of tricky. Can I do this? I don't know, we'll see. So now my thread wraps are up there toward the front of the eye. Let's see if it's gonna work. Oh, I'm trapping a couple of them. But I think I salvaged it. Got our thread. It's not clobbering our eye, but I do have a couple of these partridge sticking down that I don't necessarily want. If I can push them back. Yeah, I think we're fine right there. We got a fishable fly. It's a little drop of head cement. This thing's good to go. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.